Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 50 things that I stopped buying. A few years ago, I began adopting a more minimalist lifestyle and went from something of a shopaholic with things literally bursting out of every closet and drawer that I had to really just being able to buy less but buy better. And these are all items that I've invested in in the past but have just come to realize that either for the sake of simplicity or for saving money, I no longer need to buy them. So I'm excited to dive into this but before we do, if we don't know each other yet, hi, my name is Ashlyn and I make videos every week on this channel about minimalism, decluttering, and intentional living. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. But let's get started with the first thing that I stopped buying and that is concealer. And I feel like when people talk about your essential makeup kit, concealer is always on that list of things that you must have. But for me personally, I like using makeup to accentuate my favorite features, not necessarily to hide anything. And what I found is in the past when I did own concealer, I would never really use it that often. Plus I would just prefer to allow my skin to breathe naturally by not covering it up with a thick product. Okay, number two is food delivery services, and I have used things like DoorDash or Pizza Delivery in the past, but what I've just discovered is that you pay so much extra to have that item delivered to you than you ever would if you just went to the restaurant or went to the pizza place to get the food that you're after. With all of these food delivery services, you really are paying for convenience, and personally, I would rather just have that money in my wallet then sacrifice a few minutes to go and pick up the food. Number three is a face exfoliator. And when I switched from having my entire skincare regimen to using a towel, water, and a moisturizer, my skin actually improved dramatically. Now that might not be the case for everyone, but it certainly was for me. So any kind of facial exfoliant, it just doesn't make sense for me to invest in. Next up is dryer sheets. And this is an area where I made a one-time swap that has allowed me to save money long-term. I invested in some wool dryer balls, which I believe I got from Trader Joe's. They cost like $3.99 for four of them. And now I never have to go and buy dryer sheets. They work pretty much exactly the same way, but it was a one-time swap that I was able to to make so that I don't have to go on and buy dryer sheets for years upon years. Number five is heels and specifically stilettos. I have never been able to walk in a thin heel, not to mention that it's not great for your feet either. So I have one pair of block heels uh, and when those run out, I'll probably repurchase another pair of block heels for things like weddings or when I'm trying to get a little bit more dressed up. But when it comes to stilettos, they're uncomfortable. I have a hard time walking in them. And so what's the point? Okay, number six is mouth wash and this is something that I've bought at various points in the past thinking that it was a staple and that I needed it but in reality I just never used it when I had it brushing my teeth flossing those are habits that I do regularly but using mouthwash is never something that I've really found necessary and when I've owned it I haven't used it often so it just doesn't make sense for me to continue purchasing it okay number seven is mass-produced art and don't get me wrong here I love art my husband Christopher is an artist we have his painting throughout our house but when it comes to what I would display on my walls I want those art pieces to have meaning something that was mass produced by the thousands doesn't have that same expression of personality and meaning as something that a actual human being poured their time and effort and attention and detail into that's something that I want to display on my shelves not necessarily some kind of painting or picture that I can pick up in Ikea okay number eight is DVDs and even though Christopher and I love watching movies what we'll typically do if we're wanting to watch a movie is just rent it oftentimes with movies we're not going to watch them more than once and so financially speaking it just makes more sense for us to rent it for four dollars per view than for twelve dollars to buy the dvd the one exception to this of course is the lord of the rings trilogy christopher and i have the extended edition of all of the lord of the rings movie have it in this nice little fancy pack and those are our favorite movies since we know we're going to watch those again and again over the years it made sense for us to invest in those but for literally any other DVD, we just don't buy them. So I think it's been two years since I bought a DVD and that's the only one I've bought. Number nine is face toners. And unlike exfoliants, which actively do bad things for my skin, my issue with face toners is that when I've owned them in the past, I never really found that they do anything for me. I think there are definitely some beauty products out there that do more for you mentally than actually physically have an impact on your skincare. And for me, at least, I think toners are one of them. I didn't really ever find that they did anything for my skin when I owned them, so I just quit buying them. Number 10 is cheaply made jewelry. And even though I am a big fan of 
of necklaces and rings. What I've found is that cheaply made jewelry really does tarnish quickly. I would far rather invest in a few pieces of high quality jewelry that are going to last for years than a whole bunch of low quality pieces that are going to start discoloring after just a few wears. Okay, number 11 is salad dressings. And with this one, I have just discovered that making my own is not only a lot cheaper, but also that they taste a lot better too. Probably my favorite salad dressing in the world that is incredibly easy to make is just a combination of balsamic vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper. It's incredibly easy to put together, takes 10 seconds, but really is so much better than any dressings you could buy at the store. Number 12 is drinks at restaurants, and this is very much a money-saving oriented one for us. If you go to a restaurant, a pop or a soda is going to cost you between two and three dollars, and because I'm married and I'd be going with Christopher to the restaurant most likely, that's five dollars that we're able to save every time we go to a restaurant simply by choosing not to order drinks. And that's not even counting ordering alcoholic beverages, which can be five to fifteen dollars a piece. So that's anywhere between five and $30 that we're able to save every time that we go out to eat simply because we drink the free water that is realistically speaking healthier for us anyways. Okay, number 13 is swimsuits. And I know a lot of people who own 10 plus swimsuits and are constantly buying new ones. But I think for me, bathing suits are just more of a practical item than anything else. And so yes, if one of my two bathing suits does wear out or break, I will go out and replace it. I'm not going to go out and buy bathing suits just for the sake of having different color combinations or options. I have what I like and I don't feel the need to go and invest in more. Number 14 is cookbooks. And there was a point when I did own and invest in several cookbooks. But what I found is that I hardly ever actually reference them. I had a few family recipes that were tucked away in a little recipes box that I used and referred to frequently. But apart from that, I would mostly look online for the recipes that I was using. So a couple of years ago, I decluttered all of my cookbooks and really haven't found a reason why I would want to repurchase one since. Number 15 is foundation. And just like with concealer, I'm not a fan of putting on a thick cover of any kind on my face. So a few years ago, I made the switch from using concealer and foundation to just using a tinted moisturizer, which is light and moisturizing and far more about evening out my skin tone than it is about trying to cover anything up. Plus tinted moisturizers and BB creams on the whole tend to have healthier and safer ingredients in them. And so I think that switch additionally helps my face too. Number 16 is magazines. And there was definitely a time in my life when I was a huge magazine aficionado and would go to the store every single month and buy the latest edition of my favorite magazine. But what I've found over the years, especially as I've tried to make more intentional purchasing decisions, is that magazines often are trying to incentivize you to buy more things, which is pretty counterproductive for someone who's trying to live a more minimalist lifestyle. Number 17 is bread. And a few months ago, we were actually given a bread maker by friends of ours who didn't use theirs. But since it was given to us, we've actually used it a few times a week. And it's been a fantastic replacement to the store-bought loaves of bread, which we found were too big for us to actually eat regularly. We would often run into the issue of some of it going bad, but by having our own bread maker, we're able to make smaller loaf sizes so that we're actually eating all of the bread that we have without it going to waste. So there have been so many benefits to this swap where not having to buy bread from the store, we're able to control the ingredients in our bread now. So we're having healthier bread to eat on a regular basis. And then we're also not creating food waste. Number 18 is professional clothing. And I've been working remotely now for three plus years. And so for the longest time I held on to and even continued investing in professional clothing, thinking, oh, one day I might have a job where I'm working in an office where I'll need this. But what I've come to accept is that I don't work in an office. And so what's the point in owning and buying professional clothing? I would rather invest in a few versatile pieces that can be worn in a professional setting, but also a casual one than items that are specific only to one situation, which I find myself in only a handful of times a year. Number 19 is impulse purchases. And this is something that I've actually had to fight pretty hard to stop buying because our natural inclination is often to make impulse purchases, but it's something that's allowed me to save a lot of money as as well as reduce waste and clutter. Number 20 is eyelash curlers. And I've invested in several of these over the course of my life. But what I really discovered is that when it comes to my makeup, I like 
simple. So decluttering and choosing not to reinvest in an eyelash curler was just one extra little way that I was able to simplify my makeup collection. Number 21 is batteries. And once again, we made a very simple swap with this one. We simply use reusable batteries now instead of disposable ones. Honestly, I think the only thing that we have that might still run on batteries is our TV remotes. But when they run out of a charge, we can simply plug them into the well and recharge them rather than having to go out and invest in a pack of new ones. Number 22 is Q-tips. And this is something that I've bought in the past but never actually used. When I finally came to the realization that this just isn't a product that I use, I did end up giving all of the remaining ones I had away. It doesn't make sense to buy something you won't use, but I think sometimes we can fall into this trap of thinking that it's a staple that we should have and for that reason buy that item. But when it comes to Q-tips, spices you don't like, or any other staple that people might tell you is required, if you're not going to use it, there's no point in buying it. Number 23 is fabric softener. And this is never something that I've found made a huge difference in my clothing. For me, something that works equally as well is just to pop my clothing in the dryer for 15 minutes to get out the wrinkles. It softens them a bit, but I find that works equally as well. And it's just one less product I can invest in. Number 24 is those packs of makeup remover wipes. And yes, I did used to use them regularly, but what I found is that not only are they fairly wasteful, but also using water, a towel and a little bit of coconut oil is really all I need to remove my makeup. 25 is tampons and sanitary napkins and I switched to using a menstrual cup about three years ago and it was an absolute game changer for me when it came to my periods. It's a lot less expensive because I'm not having to invest in those products on an ongoing basis. Menstrual cups can last for years but also it takes away the pain of having to remember to take tampons with you as you go out of the house or trying to calculate how many that you'll need when you go on a trip. It is so much easier just to have one product that you can use and reuse. Okay, 26 was a big one for me and that is clothing outside of my comfort zone. If something is too far out of my personal style or my comfort zone, I'm not going to use it. And so even though an item might look good in a picture or on someone else, I don't want to spend my money on an item that's going to sit in my closet and never get worn. So if it's too far out of my comfort zone, it's just a no. Number 27 is expensive classes, whether this is an $80 art class or an expensive cooking class. I have a lot of friends who'll use things like Skillpop and other services to take these fun sounding classes that I think might be a little bit overpriced considering the fact that Christopher and I are currently trying to save up for a down payment. Now, obviously how expensive something is, is relative to your own personal income. But for Christopher and I currently spending 50 or hundred dollars on a class is just a significant enough amount of our income that we would prefer to put into savings. And of course I am a big fan of experiences. So long-term that might be something that I occasionally want to invest in, but right now for where Christopher and I are at currently and what goals we want to achieve, it just doesn't make sense to invest in those. Next up is any kind of fancy nail paraphernalia, whether that's base coats, top coats, French tip manicures. I do like nail polish and wear it decently often, but for me, a simple polish is really all I need. The idea of putting on three or four layers of nail polish really just doesn't sound fun to me. And while I do like the way that a simple clean nail polish can look, I've never been a big fan of the crazy bedazzled nails. Number 29 is bagged tea. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I'm a massive fan of loose leaf tea. It's more sustainable, the flavor is better, and there are a lot more options for what kind of tea that you want to drink. So in my opinion, loose leaf tea is something that is just so much better than bagged tea that I've stopped buying bagged tea entirely. Number 30 is stain remover for clothing. And I used to be a huge aficionado of shout wipes or tied to go pants. But what I found is that using just a small bit of laundry detergent can work really effectively in removing those stains. So I've stopped buying those stain removal specific items and continue to invest in a single laundry detergent. Number 31 is seasonal decor. And I have friends who will decorate for pretty much every holiday imaginable, Halloween, Easter, Valentine's Day, Independence Day here in the States, you name it, they decorate for it. But I think for me, I prefer to enjoy and celebrate holidays without necessarily having to decorate decorate for every single one. The only real exception with this for me is Christmas. I do like having a few tasteful Christmas decorations because it is by far my favorite holiday. But that being said, I'm still not continuing to go out and buy additional decor items. I already have what I like and what I want to be able to decorate for Christmas. And so there's not a need for me to go out and invest in additional items. 32 is bulk groceries. And for larger families, I do understand the rationale behind this one. But like I mentioned, my family consists of just Christopher and I. So when we first got married, I did actually invest in a lot of bulk groceries, which unfortunately mostly 
ended up going bad because we weren't using them often enough. I would far prefer to go to the grocery store a few times a week and buy things as we need them rather than buying everything at once and constantly trying to fight this battle of not having food go to waste on you. Number 33 is souvenirs and when you visit a souvenir shop pretty much anywhere in the world they consist of the same useless knickknacks, shirts that are pretty ugly, and generally items that you're never going to use. Trust me on this one, pictures are the best souvenirs you could possibly take home with you from your travels. They're something that's going to last and that you can treasure for years to come. Number 34 is shaving cream and there is a pretty simple explanation for why I don't buy this one. I just use soap instead. Number 35 is greeting cards and most stores in the United States at least have an aisle or two dedicated just to greeting cards that are filled with kind of meaningless statements that share love and affection. I think when it comes down to it, for me at least, a thoughtful handwritten letter is always going to mean so much more than the most expensive generic greeting card you could possibly send. And so when I want to offer someone congratulations or condolences, I would far rather just write something meaningful and personal and send that to them than to buy a five or six dollar greeting card that really has no real meaning behind it. Just had to pin my hair back for a moment because it was driving me crazy, but number 37 is disinfectant wipes. And this is another one of those items where you're paying for convenience. It is easy and it can be tempting to want to just use one of those single use wipes to clean a surface, but there are long-term costs that do add up over time with these. Not only are they just inherently more wasteful than being able to use a multi-purpose cleaner and a cloth to clean that same surface, but also even though single use wipes might not seem expensive on the surface, they do add up over time. So from a cost perspective, a waste perspective, and also just a desire not to have one more thing in the house, it makes more sense for me not to buy these. Number 37 is prepackaged foods. And once again, you're paying for convenience with this. And sometimes it's an awful lot that you're paying too. For things like pre-sliced watermelon or pre-sliced mango, you can be paying anywhere from one to $3 more for those items. So long-term, it is so much more cost effective just to spend a couple of minutes to slice those items yourself. Number 38 is single use clothing. And this might be something that you'd wear to a wedding or once I was invited to a gala. I know that I'm never going to wear those items of clothing again and so for me I would rather rent that item borrow it or even buy it from a thrift store and then re-donate it afterwards uh, then invest a lot of money in something that I'm going to wear once and never wear again number 39 is a pretty straightforward one I've stopped buying bottled water using a reusable water bottle is better for the environment it's cheaper and really it just makes sense Next, number 40 is niche kitchen appliances. So for this one, think air fryers, pasta makers, panini presses. What I find is that these types of appliances tend to take up a lot of space and not get used very often, which is basically the opposite of what I look for when it comes to things that I want to invest in in my kitchen. I'm looking for things that are multi-purpose and that I'm going to use regularly. Number 41 is air freshener. And if I ever feel the air in our home feeling stale, I will sometimes light a candle, but most frequently I like to open up a window and just let fresh air in. I would rather make our house smell good naturally than artificially. So for me, this is just a common sense swap. Number 42 is any clothing items that don't fit perfectly or are uncomfortable. I think in the past I would tend to make excuses for the clothing, like it was almost good enough, or maybe if I lost weight or gained weight, it would fit me better. But over the years, I've come to terms with the fact that if something doesn't fit perfectly or I don't find it comfortable, I'm not going to wear it. And I don't wanna waste my money buying something that's going to sit in my closet and never get worn. So if it's uncomfortable or it doesn't fit well, it doesn't belong in my closet. Number 43 is shower gel. And with this one, I just like to use soap as an alternative. Number 44 is fast fashion. And as I've become more familiar with some of the injustices and atrocities that have happened within the clothing industry, I've become increasingly hesitant to buy from fast fashion retailers. In fact, I think it's been a couple years now since I've bought any fast fashion. What I now do instead is when I need clothes Clothing, I'll look at secondhand stores as well as ethical and sustainable brands. I know I've shared some of these brands on my channel before, but a few of my favorites are Everlane for clothing, Organic Basics for undergarments like bras and underwear, and Miss Solo for sustainable shoes. Number 45 is music, and I stopped buying CDs several years ago and just recently canceled my Spotify subscription. And even though I like music and do listen to it somewhat regularly, I think I did the math of just how often I actually used Spotify. And for me, it wasn't worth it to continue paying towards a subscription service every month 
that I just wasn't using enough to justify keeping. I can still listen to music, albeit with a couple of ads, but I think long term from a money saving perspective, it just didn't make sense for me to continue investing in something that I wasn't using frequently enough to justify. Number 46 is manicures and pedicures. I know that for some people, sitting down in a nail salon and having somebody else do your nails is a really relaxing experience. But for me, I have a hard time relaxing in that type of environment. So if I'm going to paint my nails, I'd rather do it myself. Number 47 is pre-made mixes. So this could be a bread mix, a pancake mix, a muffin mix, any kind of pre-made, here's the mix throw in water type of thing. I'd consider myself a pretty good cook. And so generally I'm going to prefer a recipe if I make it myself from scratch rather than relying on a pre-made mix. I can control the ingredients a lot more that way. It tends to be cheaper and tastes better too. Number 48 is bath bombs, bath salts, bath foams. I don't really take baths. I like the idea of taking baths, but in practice, I don't actually enjoy them all that much. And so while I've bought all of these products in the past thinking that I'd use them, I've just come to the terms with the fact that I'm more of a shower person than a bath person, and I'm okay with sticking with that and not investing in bath products that I'm never going to use. Only two left here, number 49 is new vehicles, and cars tend to lose a significant portion of their value the moment you drive them off the lot. And so even if it is just a few years old, I would far rather invest in a pre-used car that has already had some of that depreciation take place, so I'm not taking all of that hit. I can still buy a nice car, but by buying one that's just a few years old and that's pre-loved, I can get the exact same value from the car for a whole lot less. And then finally, let's finish with number 50, and that is underwire bras. And I am a pretty small chested person. And so underwire bras are unnecessary for me, number one, and number two, extremely uncomfortable. In the past couple of years, I switched completely to using bralettes and I believe one strapless bra, which still doesn't have an underwire. And this was a decision that was initially a very practical and comfort based decision for me. But what I discovered in the process is that bralettes can be a lot less expensive than bras with underwires. So the decision for me to stop buying underwire bras was one that brought a lot of comfort, joy, and savings into my life, and one that I'm really happy with. Well, that's it. I know that was a lot of items, but these are all things that I've stopped purchasing in a desire to save money, to live more intentionally, as well as just to not bring unnecessary clutter into my life. I hope that you found this list helpful though, and that it maybe gave you some inspiration for items that maybe you could stop purchasing, whether that's to save money, or to reduce clutter, or simply to just enjoy the benefits of less. I would love to know though what you've stopped buying. Was it something I mentioned or maybe something else? Comment that down below. And like I mentioned, if you're here for the first time and you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button below for more minimalism, decluttering, and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. That's it for today's video though. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.